thank you for joining us today and welcome to our classroom. I'm Cheryl and I'm a TSFA instructor. Today we're going to do a couple of wrist corsages and some boutonnieres. We're going to do, first we're going to do just a simple wristlet that will be done with an elastic band and this is how it comes. It will look just like this. These little whatever they are that stick out here, these little uh, metal things, were here back when they used to do uh, wrist corsages that were taped and wired and they would actually tape and wire it and bend it over. So we are actually going to just clip those off. Some of them are a little harder to clip off than others. If you have trouble clipping it off, which it looks like I might, yes. So, if you have that trouble, just bend them over. Oh, that made it break off, and that's okay too. So, just bend it over real tight and use some, either some needle nose pliers or so, a little jewelry tool, something to kind of make it go really flat. So, you're going to just flatten that out. And then once you flatten it out, you don't want all this to show, obviously. So then you're gonna use your regular corsage tape and you're going to cover that really well. This one I've already done. And you can also see that I took the, um, there's always a seam in it. And that seam's not real comfortable on the inside of your wrist. So you'll want to move that and actually kind of put it on the inside. And see, I've got it on the inside right here. And here I did it right there. And so you've got that moved in and then you go ahead and put your green tape on there. The other little tip I'm gonna give you is this is actually a pool noodle. And you can buy those real, expensive, real inexpensive at like a Dollar Tree at the beginning of summer. And you just, first you cut it into lengths and depending on how many you're gonna do, I have them in a couple different sizes here. If you were gonna line them up and do say, you know, six or eight corsages at one time, then you would want to cut them in longer, you know, longer lengths. And then once you get that done, you just slice it It'd be better to use some type of X-Acto blade or something and slice it down the middle and then it will sit flat on your table. Otherwise, I know at first I used to do them like on a, on a water bottle or something and then you got to put something in front of it so your water bottle doesn't roll. And so this just makes it a little bit easier to, um, to handle. So, well, before I put it on there, I'm actually going to show you the bow. So I've already made my bow. And I like to do my bow in a couple different widths. So I've got like a regular number three, and it is not wired. It's just a sheer organza. And then I've also used, it's probably a one and a half, I guess, uh, wired ribbon in gold. And I like to do them with a chenille stem. And it's just got one. It only has one little twist. And so I'm gonna put it on here wrap it around once so it can't go off. There's no way it can fall, it can come off. Bring it around. You know what, I cut this one too short. So this time, and I wouldn't do this, but I'm gonna do it right now showing you. Normally you would bring it back around, you would, and you would, underneath here is where you would twist it one more time. So this time I'm just gonna twist it underneath. The reason I wouldn't wanna do that is because you might end up, um, you know, where the wire would actually uh, scratch the person that was wearing it. But what I'm gonna do in this case, and I could even do this in real life, because you would just do that and then bring it around to the front side where it couldn't hurt them. And then you would put just a little dab of glue there and a little dab of glue here, and then it would be safe. That's the main thing, is you want it to be safe, and we already know it's secure. So we are gonna put that on here. Then you just kinda situate your ribbon the way you want it. Just fluff it. And you're gonna fluff it as you go to, every time you put in some flowers, it's gonna move a little bit and you're just gonna change it a little bit. Sometimes I wait to trim these because uh, as you're putting the flowers in and out, you might actually uh, 
you know, it might ravel a little bit. So a lot of times I just wait to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and for this one I'm gonna use peach spray roses. And these are ca called uh, Ilse. It's I-S-L-E, and I've heard it pronounced a couple different ways, but it's I-S-L-E. So, and I'm gonna get, just do it with three roses, so I want three different sizes. I want a nice big open one, and then a couple of smaller ones. And this is my nice big open one, and I'm just gonna take those little sepals off they bend backwards and they're gonna end up actually um, very easily they can come off. So it's better just to go ahead and get rid of those right now. And I'm gonna take my glue. First I wanna show you, we use the Oasis uh, floral adhesive. It comes in a box like this. And this box is, um, can also become a holder for your glue. So if you will cut it in half, and then um, you can see what I've done here. Half of it becomes the actual holder, and the other half is the bottom. You just cut that, glue it. You can glue it with hot glue, or you can actually glue it with your floral adhesive, and then it becomes the holder. This glue is not like Elmer's glue. It will see, I mean, it'll just slowly start seeping out. If you lay it down on your table, it'll be all over your table. So you want to be sure and, um, uh, you know, be sure and have it upright. And this is just a good way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off now. Also, it's really good to put a little bit of Vaseline on the edges on the, I guess, where the, you know, where you screw it on and off because that will keep it from getting stuck like that. Was, this time was a little bit stuck. And if you don't have any Vaseline in the shop, you might have some Green Glow or Pocon that you can put on there. So that will solve that problem. So that's your Oasis Floral Adhesive. So this one I'm gonna do pretty flat, and but at a slight angle. I don't want it to be exactly upright. Um, I want it to be slightly to the side and take off any bad petals that you think would show. And just, you want to put the glue all around the edges and also on the end of the stem because it actually seals the moisture in the stem when you do that. So you wanna be sure that you get that sealed really well. And I'm just gonna put it in there and you have to hold it for just a few seconds just to kinda of get it started. And uh, as you do that, you can kind of mess with your ribbon a little bit if you want to and get it in there. So that's where I want that first rose to stay. The second one, I'm gonna do the same thing. And sometimes you can pull the sepals off, but sometimes they're like really, um, they're really attached. So uh, most of the time I just use my knife and take them off real easily that way. And then it's a nice clean cut and you don't have to worry about them coming off. And I want, a, I want a little bit longer on this one because it's gonna be angled. This is like a mini arrangement. It still has to have balance, it has to have proportion, and it has to radiate from the center and show the uh, folk to draw you into the focal area. So keep that in mind as you are making your corsage. And see, I've got some bad petals here that I'm gonna take off. If I can't get them all off, I wanna be sure and use my knife, get in there and get that off. So get that all done real quickly and then cut that. And if I were doing a whole line of these, I would probably do all my center ones, or I would. I would do all my center roses, I'd get them glued, and I would never do that on the tablecloth like I just did. So you would want a piece of paper right under you, and you would have them upside down, and you would just go along and glue each one of them. The glue actually holds a little better if it gets a little bit tacky. So you wanna be sure that you uh, have left it long enough. Sometimes I will just kind of wave it in the air a little bit and make sure that it's um, kind of just, and I wouldn't say beginning to dry, but just get that little bit of tackiness. So I'm gonna do one kind of off-centered this direction. 
So this would be like the girl's arm, and it's going to be slightly so angled in as if they're all kind of at the same growth point. And this one's going to be angled in this direction. So, so that way they're not straight across. So, and I'm just going to hold them for just a few seconds so they will uh, begin to uh, hold. If you have them straight, you're going to see the side of that rose and it's not going to be nearly as pretty as it would be if you, uh, you know, if you have it at this angle where it's radiating. Okay, I think that's enough to make that hold right now. And we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of, um, let's see, I think we'll do the Misty. And this right here is a little vase of things that I picked up off the floor. So a lot of times when you're designing, you're gonna have a lot of little pieces on the floor, just pick those up and save them. Uh, right now I don't have them in water because I just picked them up, but you would put them in a little bit of water. There's a little bit of seeded eucalyptus, there's a little bit of agonis, a little bit of misty, wax flower, and also some silver dollar eucalyptus. So you have all these things to be able to use and they were probably gonna be just put in the trash can. So just don't, you know, get rid of those things. So right now I'm gonna take I think I'll use a little bit of this um, seeded eucalyptus leaves to elongate the, the corsage a little bit. I'm actually going to put a little bit of glue right here. And I'm going to just dip into it for these leaves because sometimes with the leaves it's a little bit easier. And I'm just going to grab some of them and put them in. And so I'm getting varying sizes, one a little bigger and one a little bit smaller. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, just kind of in, in reverse. So I'm going to put the larger one more on that side and the smaller one on this side. So. There you go. And then we'll use a little bit of, uh, I think we'll use a little bit of this Misty. And just cut some small pieces. I'm gonna cut several little pieces to use. And then just begin to glue these in, creating a little bit of depth. We don't want them to um, come up too far, but you do want them to be able to come up above the roses to uh, just create a little bit of depth and interest and also bring um, emphasis to that focal area. And remember, they are radiating also, the same as you learned, you know, with your uh, other arrangements that you do. And then I think you want a little bit out to the side too, to bring some uh, length and um, you don't want a little short stubby corsage. You want it to be attractive coming up their arm. So let me try to, I'm going to turn it around so I can see this side and put a little bit over here. And then I'm going to need to have a little bit of uh, foliage on this side too. So since I started with the uh, eucalyptus, I kind of want to stay in that color family and um, I'm not sure if I have any leaves quite small enough, so we might just use the seeds and put some of the seeds in there. Because we're just trying to use up what we have here. And they really create some interest down deep in there and some depth. And that little bit of color actually is really, really pretty with the peach roses. Let's see that. 
and uh, not all of them have that color. So I'm picking out some of the seeded eucalyptus that has that really pretty color in it. So I don't want it to look exactly like a mirror image. I want it to be more, um, just a little more natural looking, I guess, is what I'm trying to say on this. So, put a little bit more right here. And then I'm gonna hold my ribbon up a little bit to hold that in place, and that will all glue in place there. And then I will just trim my ribbon here. And there you go. You have your corsage. So that's an easy, inexpensive way to do a corsage. You would want to um, do the back of it. And I'm gonna show you how to do the back of it. And I should have done that first. But the back side, even though you have the green tape on there, it's still not that attractive. So you want to take something like a um, like a silver dollar eucalyptus leaf is always really good because it will cover it. You can also use a silk leaf if you want to but just put some glue on there and cover that whole backside with that silver dollar uh, eucalyptus and that way you have a completely finished corsage. So there you go. That's a simple basic corsage. So, and that's with the elastic band. Some other ways, they, now the elastic bands do come in other colors. So this one is kind of a purple, but they come in pretty much any color. So you can let it be part of the design, or you can do buy these, which are, you have to keep in mind, they're gonna be more expensive, but you can do the pearl bracelets. And um, then these, all kinds of different beaded. There's many, many out there. This one is more of an arm band and it will actually bend to the so whatever size you know you need. Um, you just kind of may have to push it in a little bit to make it work, but uh, that's another idea. Sometimes when you don't know the size of the girl that's going to be wearing it, it's kind of hard to know what is going to work best for them. So one thing that is very inexpensive because an elastic band, if someone has a large wrist, it can become very uncomfortable during the evening and it will be, uh, you know, and then they're gonna wanna take it off and just put it on the table. So, um, so that's not always the best choice. And so if you don't know the size and you don't know, you know, and you also wanna save some money, a good way to do it is the way I've done this one right here. And this is just done on a piece of um, number nine satin ribbon. So I'm going to show you how to do that because it's super inexpensive. It's a very light, it's one of the most lightweight corsages you can wear. You can dance in it, you can move around all the time and it just really doesn't move on your on your wrist at all. You can do just a knot here if you don't want the bow, uh, but it's just very, uh, like I said, it's very comfortable. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quickly. So this is your number nine ribbon. Uh, if I just want a neutral color, I would use the antique white. The antique white is not exactly white, but it's not like ivory. So it's really uh, a nice color. It will go with white roses, but it'll also go with ivory roses. So just, I'm just gonna, it, it's about 32 inches, so I'm just gonna kind of guess here. Because you can trim some. And I always put instructions in the box along with this so they know how to, uh, you know, how to put it on and, you know, let them know that they can trim it, that kind of thing. So here's my ribbon. And I already have my bow made. This time I used wired ribbon and just one ribbon one, uh, for the bow. And I have it on, this is half a stem of a chenille stem. And the moss green works best because it is pretty much the color of the stems. And so this is, like I said, this is just half a stem. So you get about halfway and just scrunch it up like that. Twist it only once and bring it back around. And it looks like you're smashing your bow, but it's okay 
because especially with the wired ribbon, but really with any of it, it will come back. Come back around to the front of the bow and then twist it one time and then flatten it out. And I like it to be really nice and flat. So I will usually even take some needle nose pliers or jewelry tool or something and kind of flatten it out a little bit. Then take your wire cutters and cut that off really short. And actually all of the texture on this chenille stem really helps to, um, you know, the glue to adhere. So it really, if anything, it helps hold everything to it. I still put it on here, turn it around, just do a little tie, because it gives that roundedness that you need to be able to make that uh, corsage and it, uh, you know, like the illusion of a wrist so you know what it's gonna look like on her wrist. When you do it flat, it tends to look flat when you finish it. So this really helps to be able to uh, do that. And you can do the roses the exact same way. Um, I know in school a lot of times you may not have a lot of money and I know sometimes they'll put like five, seven roses, spray roses on a um, wrist corsage. But you know the girls really most of the time don't want anything big and so we're just gonna go ahead and go with the three again and I'm gonna do the same just like I did and you're gonna see it's pretty much just like the, um, the other wrist corsage, you're just gluing it in a little differently. So I've got three sizes here and um, this is the largest. So I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. I've got some bad petals. I'm gonna take those off, get rid of my sepals real quickly. and uh, again, cut it off. Just give it a little air so it will uh, begin to get tacky. And then just go ahead and put it in. Just slightly off-centered. And then do the same thing on these two. These are coming off real easily, so I'm really not even using my knife. A lot of times you can't do that or you will uh, end up like breaking the, the head of the rose. So, um, you know, be real careful. I could just tell these were like coming off super, super easy. So I am just pulling them off. These are the kind that would be hard to tape and wire because they would be trying to come off while you were uh, actually um, holding them and, wire and taping them, so. And be sure you get it on the end when you're gluing it to be sure that you um, are sealing that moisture in again. I know I already said that once, but that's so important because those, uh, that's the only place the rose it doesn't have any other place to get moisture anymore, so it's gotta keep what it has. So I'm gonna put one, and I'm kinda of lift up some ribbon like I did before, and tuck it in there, just so it's nice and, um, you know, so it looks a little more, like it's all part of the same, uh, same thing. You don't want it to be like you have the roses, the, the ribbon, and then you have the roses. You want it to all be part of the same. And see as I let go of it, how it goes to the side like that? That's why it's important to hold it for just a few seconds to let it dry really well. So we'll let that dry. And then uh, we can decide what kind of, um, this time I think we'll use the wax flower. And uh, there's some, Looks like, there, I think there's enough wax flower here. Oh, we've got some more over here if we don't. But we'll use this we found off the floor first. So, okay, I'm just gonna cut off several pieces, kind of short, so I'll be able to um, glue those in. And if you cut them all at once, it just saves you a little bit of time because there's um, 
corsages do have a lot of detail work and so if you can save yourself a little time that always helps. So another thing you can do with uh, little stems like that is just, and this is what I do a lot of times, is just let a little bit ooze out. Sometimes I make a little bit of a mess there, but then you just can kind of put that in. This wax flower has this tiniest little bit of pink to it and these roses do too, so it really uh, looks pretty with, uh, with these roses. Okay. I like the little bitty wax flower that you only get sometimes, and it only, I think it's only like certain times of the year, but it has a tiny little bloom, and it has a little bit of pink to it, and it is so pretty, but we just can't get it all the time, so. Just going to keep adding some of these. And then I think I'm going to use a little bit of this. Um, and this is Italian Pittosporum, and uh, some people call it curly pit. Um, it's in the Pittosporum family, as you can see, but it's got much smaller leaves, and it works really well for corsage work because it, it does have the small leaves. And most of the time, you don't want anything very big for corsage work. So we'll just put a little bit of it here and there. Get some greenery going. I think you'll be really surprised with this corsage as you wear it. And, you know, let your students make one, let them wear it, and see how easily, you know, how it you just really doesn't bother you. So many corsages, you wear them and you just feel like you just have all this weight on your hand and it's just, you wanna take it off. But these are really super comfortable. And like I said, really inexpensive because you don't have, you know, you have very little expense. You get a huge roll of this number nine ribbon. You wanna be sure you use the double face satin though. Don't use the regular floral satin because it won't hang pretty but it is very uh, economical. And when you're doing this, you wanna be sure and hide your little bit of chenille stem there. As you can see, that's what that little piece of greenery there did. And um, there's your corsage. I could add another little, um, I mean, I may not have it even all the way around because I'm just trying to give you the general idea, but um, you wanna add maybe one more so wax flower right there. And I guess I have it a little too long because it doesn't want to stand up, it wants to lay down. I think I'm enough glue there though just to put it in. Well, we're gonna try one more time. And that also hides that chenille stem even better. And then you can use jewels of any kind you can pick these up at your wholesaler. Um, there's all different kinds. Um, let's see, here's some right here that are kind of a neutral color. You just use your wire cutters, cut those off, and um, put a little glue on there, and they will come kind of up and out of the, of the corsage to give it a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of bling. And for prom, the girls like a little bling. So. There you go. And you can put as much bling or as little bit of bling as you want. And so there is that corsage. It's like the one I'm wearing. So that was, hopefully, that was helpful. And um, you like it. So hope you will try it with your students. And now I'm gonna show you just a couple of boutonnieres that we've already done. Uh, this one is very much like the boutonniere that you learned in level one. So it has two uh, spray roses though instead of the one large rose. So you always put the larger one at the bottom and the smaller one at the top. Just like in your arrangements, you want your weight down at the base of the arrangement so it's the same way. And um, 
there's a nice leaf on the back that gives it some weight also. So that's one way. And this is just plain with your light green tape that we would normally use for any corsage. So, um, and you can cover that. You can use some like thin sheer ribbon. I, was, I don't have any up here, but you could use thin sheer ribbon and just cover that. You would cover the bottom too and put a little knot at the back. For weddings, you would always wanna cover this tape. For prom, I think it looks a little better to cover it too, but uh, that's definitely, uh, I wanted you to see it like this and know that you have ways to cover it. And then something that's really trending right now, and I'm gonna show you how to make one of these, and that's just a little mixed um, boutonniere. It has some oryngium or thistle, it has some um, agonas, it has the seeded eucalyptus, and it has the gunny eucalyptus. So this is just a little mix, and instead of, there is absolutely no wiring, there is one little piece of tape. I think your students will like that, because that taping and wiring, I know it's not their favorite thing sometimes, and it's, and it's not always anybody's favorite thing, but you, we have to know how to do it. So that's why uh, we show you both ways, and we'll still do these all the time for weddings. But this one is trending, and I'll show it to you. Also, Baby's Breath was in, gosh, about 15 years ago, and it is seems to be coming back again. So, um, you know, and sometimes it'll be even just the baby's breath, nothing else. Uh, with a little twine or a little bind wire over it. This one is bind wire, and I had bind wire. Can somebody grab the bind wire for me? Because I do want to show it to you and show you how to use it, because I, and I'm gonna use it on the boutonniere that I'm gonna do. But um, bind wire comes in three colors. It comes in green, brown, and this kind of craft paper color. And what bind wire is, it's just wire that has like a paper over it. And it's made by Smithers Oasis, and it just, thanks Debbie. So it's, um, anyway, so you can see here, there's a wire inside, but there's just paper over it. Uh, so, and that's what both of these have on them. Twine is something big right now, and a lot of times this would be twine right here. So first of all, I'm gonna give you one tip on your bind wire. It comes with paper around the edges like this. It'll be all the way around it. This one, it looks like somebody might have tried to take it off, but you for sure do not want to take the, the wire off, I mean the plastic off, because if you do, the whole thing comes apart and you're gonna have a really big mess. So you pull it from the inside, this all comes from the inside, and uh, keep that plastic on there. So we're gonna use that in just a minute, and it's made by Smithers Oasis, and you can get it at your wholesaler. So <clears throat> we're just gonna decide what we wanna do. I think, I mean, we're gonna use some of this, um, some of the hypericum berries. I'm gonna pull a little bit longer one, so it doesn't even take a whole piece or it might end up taking two of them. Let's see, let me get another small one. So, you just gather them together in your hand and it's, you're kind of just kind of deciding how you want it to look. And of course, if you were doing this for a wedding, because this is trending in weddings. So if you were doing it for a wedding, you would want to, um, you know, figure out the first one, obviously, because they would need to be, um, to look pretty much the same. So you find a look you want. Let's get a little bit. I have some gunny eucalyptus. I think we'll use that. The eucalyptus are really big for weddings. Um, all the girls seem to want any kind of eucalyptus. They want seeded eucalyptus, gunny eucalyptus, silver dollar eucalyptus, any of those eucalyptus. So um, you will see that trend. So we're just gonna use a little bit of that. And wherever your bind point is, you need to make sure you don't have any foliage on there. So that foliage is gonna be, you pull it all off from there down. And you don't want these two the same length. You'll see I've got these two different lengths. So then we'll just pick up our hypericum berries, put them in. <coughs> Now 
Sometimes you have to twist it around, get it to where you want it to hold it just right. And then I think, and this is the same premise as this one really that's already done here, but just wanted you to see it in, you know, how it's done while it's, you know, in action how it's done, so. <clears throat> this is the agonis, which we're gonna add a little bit of that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm telling you, cedar fever in Central Texas is not a fun thing. And uh, I'm thinking I'm getting a little bit of cedar fever, so I apologize. Okay, but as you can see, you add that and it, you kind of need a little something at the base because you don't have good balance that way. So the seeded eucalyptus, again, is a really good thing to use for that. So I am going to grab a piece of that. But I don't want those big leaves because that would not be good proportion to have those big leaves there. So we're just gonna pull those off and put a little bit of seeded eucalyptus down there. And I think we need one more little piece. So get it, just kind of play with it till you get it the way you want it. Okay, I think maybe that's about right. It, you could even add some of the other greenery if you wanted to, to bring it in. I mean, that could work too. Kind of have it a little bit uh, offset to where you have the seeded eucalyptus on one side and the Italian pit on the other. And then you just take a piece of your corsage tape and you're only gonna wrap it around one time. So hold it together and just wrap it. Well, you might go around twice, but not any wider than one um, width of the corsage tape. And then you will cut it off even. Grab these. And sometimes they may not be exactly even, and that's okay too. But as even as possible, where you have something like that, and then you take your bind wire, and if you can, kind of put it up in there with your stems. If you can kind of insert it into there, that works well. And then begin to go around. And you can go, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of go over it again until you don't see any more of the corsage tape. Now, if you were doing this with the twine, you would want to go ahead and do the same amount, but up at the top, top at the back, you would just do a tiny little knot and then you would just cut it off kind of short and, uh, you know, not leave long tails or anything. So this is your boutonniere and um, I'm glad that you came today and joined us. And if you have any questions, please just contact us at tsfa.org. Thank you.